What it do? Ed Tom Crew. Hey man, listen, today I am here to give you guys some advice. Okay, because a lot of you guys may or may not know that I'm the best predictor on YouTube statistically. I mean, I've borderline have a hundred percent prediction rate. I've never got a fight pick wrong. I've only uh, you know, ran out of time of my prediction coming true. Okay. Um now, me personally, I don't bet on fights. I think if you bet on UFC or if you, and you bet on fucking MMA, which is the most nonsensical, fake, CGI scripted sport of all time, you deserve to lose your money. But with that being said, today, I'm going to be talking about fighters that will absolutely cook your fucking parlay and ruin your life and just say goodbye to your, 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 your kid's college. Because this is how you lose it, by having bets against or for these fighters. All right, dude? Coming in strong to start off Jalen Turner I mean this guy has a WMMA record of 14 and 8 do I need to say anything else he is perhaps one of the most talented dangerous you know rangy fighters at lightweight who on his best day can absolutely murk any contender at lightweight and then in his next fight this guy's walking away from a first round KO this guy literally will fucking sell your parlay so bad, bro. He was borderline. I, I swear to God, this guy was like, what, was like one of the biggest favorites against uh, Moicano, dude. This guy fumbled like me with the fucking baddies, dude, with Moicano. This was crazy. And I feel like watching Jalen Turner fight, it's just win one, lose one, win one, lose one. He got robbed against Gamrod as well. I mean, you just cannot have Jalen Turner anywhere near your parlay or else you're fucking done for. So. He is number one on my list. I got to throw him in here and let you know, do not put Jalen Turner on the parlay. Just let him just let him get bounce back from this Moicano loss and we'll see where he goes from there. But right now, absolutely not. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> not necessarily, you know, don't pick this guy, but Paul Craig will fucking ruin your shit. Dude. Paul Craig will absolutely sell and not in terms of, oh, you think he's going to win. No, Paul Craig is a fighter you absolutely cannot predict to win a fight. There is not a single, I'm going to be real, I don't think there's ever been a single fight I've gone, you know what, I think Paul Craig's going to win this. I think Paul Craig, I was, I was, I've never confidently picked Paul Craig in my life, okay? The only time Paul Craig wins is when he's against a guy that he absolutely has no business beating. Jamal Hill, Magomed Ankalaev, you know, all these other, Nikita Krylov, I'm pretty sure that was a close fight. I don't even fucking remember, dude, I'm not going to lie, but Paul Craig, fluky flukester of the highest order. And if you're even slightly confident, I don't know, dude, he might be able to have a good matchup against Brendan Allen. I don't know, man. He might, might do okay against Cal Brajo. Absolutely cook. Not happening. Say goodbye. It's over. So uh, if you confidently are picking against Paul Craig, you are, you are always gambling with the idea that this guy's going to throw up a fucking triangle in round three. And I, that's just not a risk I'm willing to take if I was a betting man. So Paul Craig's definitely a guy I'm going to be avoiding in any parlay if I'm a smart man. But that being said, if I have like an enemy or something, or like my brother's pissing me off and he's like, oh, who should I put in my parlay? I go, yo, Paul Craig, bro. Yo, throw, throw Paul Craig in there on your parlay, bro. He's going he's gonna to hit, dude. You're fucking done for, dude. All right? <laughs> so Paul Craig's one. Next one. Boys, this is probably, you know, I've talked about this guy before as one of the greatest fighters in the UFC. One of the most reliably unreliable fighters in the in the UFC and borderline welterweight goat Neil Magny dude Neil Magny uh, besides the Ian Gary fight I don't think I've ever confidently picked a Neil Magny fight in my life in my life dude let, let that sink in bro against Mike Malott you're like bro yeah Mike Malott's gonna fucking cook this guy this guy gets a round three TKO with 10 seconds left first of all getting TKO by Neil Magny couldn't be me bro couldn't be me, dude. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I know that you guys think it's funny when I make these jokes of like, oh, I could, you know, pit a pat a, a decision against Sergei Pavlovich. I'm confident I'm not getting slumped in round three by Neil Magny with an ice pack on my head, bro. I'm confident, dude. All right? I'm not getting a UFC 5 knocked out animation against Neil Magny. That's just not happening, dude. Uh, but with that being said, you pick against Neil Magny confidently. I'm pretty sure this guy was born as the fucking betting underdog of his life, right? You pick against Neil Magny. He's, he's winning a split decision against your guy. He's, he's finding a round three submission, okay? You pick Neil Magny, you go, you know what, dude? This is a good matchup for him. He can win this. You know, he might be able to pull this one off. This is a good fraud check for him. A 30-26 later or a round one submission later, you're fucking done for. Neil Magny just got subbed. You know what I'm saying? You, you cannot put Neil Magny in the parlay, bro. You can't pick him to win because he'll somehow fucking lose. 
you can't pick him to, to lose because then he'll hold your guy against the fence and win the decision. Yeah, just, just avoid Neil Magny at all costs. And if I was a fighter coming up, I, I forgot to actually put Neil Magny on my ducking tier list. I would have ducked Neil Magny hard, bro, if I was in the welterweight division because there, there's no winning, bro. You're either winning a boring decision or you're getting absolutely fraud checked and finished in round three. And that's just a fate worse than death, honestly. Shout out to Neil Magny, though. He's the GOAT. Uh, but yeah, do not put this fucking guy in your parlay. I promise you that, right? Let's move on to, honestly, an underrated you know, name in the game of, uh, you know, cooking up the parlays wrong, ruining your life, you know, gambling away your future. This guy is real sneaky with it. And, you know, I don't see a lot of people talking about him, but he's building up a bit of a legacy slowly, fight by fight, as someone that'll ruin your fucking parlay. Christian Rodriguez, dude. Even when he loses, he fucking wins. This guy, you see him booked against your favorite prospect, it's over. Say goodbye. There's no way out of this one. Your time has come. You cannot beat Christian Rodriguez, dude. You cannot beat him. I'm confident they could book Christian Rodriguez versus Peyton Talbot right now. This guy would win a split decision. You can't put this, you can't bet against this fucking guy. All right. That being said, knowing how MMA works, because, you know, I'm, I'm a crafty bet of the MMA, you know, YouTube game of, of, of watching MMA as well. This is what, this is what I know is going to happen. The second we all start picking Christian Rodriguez, He's going to fucking lose somehow, bro. I know it, dude. I know it. But right now, this guy is ruining parlays. This guy is ruining fucking careers. This guy is ending hype trains. I almost love watching it so much. I, I am interested to see how he does against Julian Arosa because Julian Arosa is not a prospect. He's a crafty, crafty veteran. And I think that may backfire on Christian Rodriguez. But yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not betting this, I'm not betting on this guy. I'm not confidently picking against this guy ever. You can't fucking do it, all right, dude? Why does he look like Danny Gay's like an older cousin, bro? Anyways, let's move on to, uh, man, this guy. It's not even funny talking about this guy. Like some of these, like Neil Magny, Paul Craig, you know, it's kind of funny talking about how they sell and how they're, they're so inconsistent. You know, it's just part of their, their, their charm, right? Like you're not a Paul Craig fan because you think he's going to win the belt. You're a Paul Craig fan because you love the idea of him throwing up a round three submission on some hyped up prospect, right? But this guy... He will not only sell your parlay, he'll piss you off because you actually think he's good. Kevin Holland. I know so many fucking people who probably had Kevin Holland in their parlay at UFC 299, probably picked against him at 302. You know what I'm saying, dude? And you just cannot predict this fucking guy. And, and, and I love it because I can. I feel like I was the only one for like two years being like, this guy does not like winning fights. He doesn't give a fuck. Now we know that he agrees with it. He's talking about being the best gatekeeper. But man, 2022, 2023, I made a lot of fucking genius predictions based on the fact Kevin Holland does not actually try when he fights. You can't, you cannot pick him. If you think, like even against Ole Zaychuk, I was like, he should win this, but it's Kevin Holland. You know what I'm saying? Like you never really fucking know. He's just so devious with it, bro. <laughs> like this guy just cannot fucking decide if he wants to be good or not. And it's, 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 it's impossible to predict. It's frustrating as fuck. And yeah, if you want to keep your sanity and keep your money, do not put Kevin Holland in your pile. Like, even if he's fighting the worst fighter in the UFC, this guy may just get bored in it. He may just decide, you know what? I don't want to stuff the takedowns. You know? I don't want to stuff the takedowns, dude. I actually want to lose this fight, dude. It's part of the storyline, bro. Like, you don't know what he's going to do. So Kevin Holland's a big fucking contender in this video. I've got two more left. One of these guys, I made a big video about, you know, I ranted about him and and I, and I feel like I went a little bit far. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include him here, but I will, you know, give him some respects, dude. And Anthony Smith, you know, now obviously I, I talked about him in my 303 video. I said, Anthony, hang it up, retire. You know, you're a blob, you know, all this stuff. You know, how'd you gas out after one exchange? You know, all this stuff that I said about Anthony Smith. And I'd just like to apologize for not saying it fucking sooner and for picking this guy at 303 because this is what Anthony Smith does. This is what he does. Anthony Smith, when you're confident he's going to lose, all of you picked fucking, uh, what's his name? What's that fucking Brazilian dude? Vitor Pedrino or whatever the fuck his name is, right? You guys picked Vitor Pedrino at fucking 301 and Anthony Smith locks up a ghillie on him like he's Dustin Poirier, right? He's back. He's back. Oh my God. Lionheart title run. And then he's fighting Roman Delidze, who's another guy that would just fluke a win. But I, I'm not even going to give him the respect of putting him in this video, right? Anthony Smith, 
when he's fighting a guy on short notice that's smaller than him, that hasn't been training as long as him in for this fight specifically, you know, that's coming from, again, for coming from one of the worst weight classes. And this guy's gassing out in the first exchange and gets 30-27 and lets Roman Delidze enter the top 10 of light heavyweight. And if he won this fight, he may have been able to fluke himself a title shot. You know, that's what Anthony Smith does. You cannot put him in your parlay. He's the only fighter that has the capabilities to fluke a win. But the second it gets difficult, he gets taken down. He's holding the fucking two-on-one control on the wrist. He's looking in the camp. I just didn't feel like myself in here, man. I just don't feel like myself in here, man. I, I tried, guys. I tried. You know what I'm saying? That's all I could think about. The second Roman Delidze didn't even knock him down. Bumped into him with his shot. If you rewatch the fight, he didn't actually hurt Smith with a punch. He bumps into Smith. Smith falls over. Delidze gets on top of him. Anthony Smith just immediately gives up his back, goes two on one on the wrist, and just looks in the camera like, guys, I tried, man. You know, I, I did the, I, I just didn't feel like myself in here, guys. Like the weight, I just didn't have a good weight cut, guys. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel like myself in here. Hunter, he's like talking to Hunter and Dan. You're not Poirier, dude. You ain't this crafty, like OG veteran champion that can just be mid fight talking to Dana and Hunter. Bro, you, that, you ain't, you ain't Dustin Poirier, dude. You are not Michael Bisping, bro. I know you're hanging out with Bisping all day. You're not Bisping, bro. This guy is just, uh, you cannot trust this guy to fucking win, to try. He's called Lionheart, but all he, the only reason he's Lionheart is because he survives through beatdowns. He doesn't actually try and get back into it. You, could, you cannot trust Anthony Smith to win. You can't even really trust him to lose by knockout or finish. Like He will drag it out. So definitely do not put Anthony Smith in your parlay. And there is one man left to talk about. You know, all these other guys, they're pipsqueaks compared to this guy. Th these guys are like demigods. This guy is the capital G god of parlay ruiner. Right, completely unpredictable fighter. When my girl says, "Yo, I need a guy that's reliable. I need a guy that's consistent." This is my honest to god reaction. <laughs> this is my honest to god reaction. <laughs> this is who I've become, dude. Michael Johnson. You cannot fucking put this guy in your pilot. You cannot predict this guy, dude. Not only will he lose to Clay Guida and Darren Elkins, he will somehow fucking beat Dustin Poirier in the in the same career, bro. Mm -hmm. How the fuck does this guy go life and death with Gaethje and Khabib and, and beat Poirier and beat Tony Ferguson? And he's getting 30-27 by Clay Guida, bro. You cannot fucking predict this guy. I picked Darius Flowers to beat this guy, bro. Because I was like, you have to do advanced calculations to decide if any of these, and this applies to all of these guys, but especially to Michael Johnson. You not only have to predict, oh, who's the better fighter? Who's going to win? No, no, no. That makes too much sense. You have to do advanced mathematic calculations like your fucking Oppenheimer to decide if he's going to lose or win. You can't just go, well, you know, he's better than this guy. He's more experienced. He can win. No, you have to go, well, the guy that he's fighting is on a two fight losing streak. So he might actually be able to beat Michael Johnson somehow. Or you go, well, this guy's a good prospect, but he's not so good that he, that Michael Johnson will beat him. He's just mid enough to beat Johnson, you know, and then you get an elite fighter. You go, you know what? Michael Johnson might be able to win this. You know, Michael Johnson might be going on a title run. You don't know. Michael Johnson doesn't know. Nobody knows. I wouldn't be surprised if this, guy, if, if this guy's in the fucking gym, you know, KOing Shavkat and Ian Gary, and then Song Kanan asks him for a round, and Song Kanan's like destroying this guy in the gym. You, you, that's just what he does. Michael Johnson is the god of this topic of parlay ruiners. If you pick against him, he will flatline KO the guy you picked. If you pick him, he, he's on his back getting held against the fence for three rounds. You know, it is what it is. You can't predict it. That's why we love Michael Johnson. Literally 23 and 20, this guy, he, he, he is the perfect balancer of the universe, bro. You know, all things should be perfectly balanced like Michael Johnson's career. But yeah, these are my picks for the biggest parlay ruiners, the most unpredictable fighters in the UFC. Let me know down below who has sold you on a parlay, who has ruined your fucking life and ruined your college saving fund. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Go follow me on Instagram and Twitter at BedtimeMMA, and I will see you guys in the next video, man. Goodbye.